Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guests today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you. And today's episode is a first for the podcast, which I'm very, very excited about. We're going to talk about leveraging the power of a mastermind to grow your business. We're going to talk about working in your business versus on your business, a number of different things. Uh, but I have a rock star guest lined up for us today, Jeremy Shapiro of the Bay Area Mastermind, facilitator of that mastermind. And we're going to unpack all of this. So before we dive in, Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me and for creating this wonderful community of like-minded business owners, entrepreneurs, and uh, and founders who are out there getting it done, building businesses. This is great. That's right. It's what we're all about, but we don't want to do it the same old, same old way, working ourselves to death 80 hours a week. Nobody wants that, right? No. Out with the old, in with the new. And we're here to talk about the new. We're here to talk about masterminds. Um, this is a dirty word, so, some may say, because a traditional mastermind, which I want to get your feelings on it, but really should be a place of collaboration, right? And, and inspiration. But I think we've kind of made this vanilla term of mastermind, which is like a cult leader talking at an audience and paying a couple thousand dollars a month. Uh, so where where do you fall on that spectrum? Man, you know, what you just touched on is what I call like the guru led masterminds. And there's value in those. And I've certainly been parts of those groups as well. But typically what it looks like is you read a book, you like the author, the author has like a course you go by, you buy the course where you find out about the live event you can go to. You go there and then you find out about this high-end mastermind you can provide you know, new car money to be part of. And then like you get to hang out with them, right? And that's sort of a guru-led. I'm much more a fan, however, of what I call peer-led mastermind groups. So this is where the value isn't in sort of that person who you want to rub shoulders with, but in the curated community of like-minded business owners who you get to hang out with. Folks who've been there, who've done that, and are truly open to providing you not just that one perspective from the leader, but that diverse perspective from the group. And that's able to challenge you in good ways and help you to uncover those blind spots. Yeah, that's the the perfect description of a true mastermind, what it should be. I think if you're, you know, if we've offended you, I'm sorry, I've done it before on the show, so you're probably not here at this point. But for those of you who are still left, um, I, I think if you're going somewhere to, to be in proximity with the leader, that one person, you kind of got to check yourself. Like, why are you there for that person and not the group that's also going to be around you? Because that to me is where the value is. Being able to build those relationships, talk to those people and pick up the phone and say like, hey, Jeremy, it's Tuesday afternoon. I'm, I'm struggling with my marketing or whatever. That stuff is so valuable for growing your business at a high level. So I love that this is the, the concept that your group takes on. So talk to me about your mastermind group, Bay Area Mastermind. Um, how, how old is it and what kind of brought about founding that group? Yeah, so I've been parts of mastermind groups uh, myself for decades, um, including some of the uh, exact style groups you're talking about there. Um, you know, and there's what I call sort of in the spectrum of mastermind groups, there's what I call the destination mastermind groups, right? These are the ones where like you hop on a plane, you fly somewhere and you're sort of out of office for a week and you've got the expense of travel, the six to seven figure a year fee to be part of the group. And the time away from the business, the family and everything else, just to spend two days with sort of the leader of the group um, and the others who are there. Um, but one thing you touched on there is spot on. And that is the people I've met in those groups are the people to this day when my phone rings and I see their face on my phone. Those are the people whose calls I answer because we've been in the trenches. We've been in those groups together and we've seen the growth and we've built the relationship. So that's like one of those really valuable things that does come from those groups. So that's sort of that, those high-end destination groups you're touching on. On the other end of the spectrum are like these, you know, I don't know, I call them like coffee accountability groups. You go to the coffee shop once a week, you hop on like a 30 to 90 minute call and you catch up on what's going on in business and talk about where you're getting blocked. One of the challenges there is like a one week period for like a check-in is like, you can't really make any big changes in your business in that one week period. Also, it's usually free to low cost. So the turnover is pretty high. And lastly, you usually only have like 30 to 90 minutes. So you can't really dive deep into what's going on in your business. 
The sweet spot that I found, and this is what we use at the Bay Area Mastermind, is a once a month meeting for a full day to really deep dive into your business. And during each member's hot seat and each guest's hot seat, we cover a few topics. Primarily, what's going on in your business, what's happened since the last meeting, your accountability items, right? But also what's working, what's not working, and where you need help. And what I find like so fascinating about this is when people come into the room, everyone has an idea of what they know. Like this is your superpower, the stuff you're really good at, the areas where you're just, you know, crushing it in your business, right? That's the stuff you know you know. Everyone usually comes in with a big question or a challenge or the thing keeping them up at night. And this is a thing they know that they don't know about, right? So when you think about sort of your biggest block in your business right now, it's the thing you know is holding you back. But the third area is where I see so much value. And that's one of the biggest things we see happen time and time again in those aha moments during the Bay Area Mastermind is the area of you didn't know, you didn't know. As everybody else is sharing what's going on in their business, what's working, what's not, that's where you get exposure to what's outside those blinders. That's where you see what others are doing and that's working well for them or what they tried that didn't work. And you get the shortcut in the short path towards success because of the leveraged knowledge of the group, that true harmonious mastermind of the other members that are there. Bonus points, you threw in harmonious to your answer. I love that. <laughs> um, no, I, I love that concept. And that's, um, I don't hear a lot who meet once a month for, or even for a full day. I think that's very rare. I'm curious what sort of a, um, you know, what, what comes out of that? Because do you get through everybody's challenges in, in one full day? That's obviously a long time, but that's yeah. gotta be a draining day, but also a very profitable day for those who are there. It's, it's hugely beneficial. And the reason we have to limit the group size is so as we, you know, have each member sitting around the boardroom table, we're able to dedicate that time to each member to deep dive into their business. And part of my role as the facilitator is making sure everyone gets a chance to have their hot seat and each hot seat moves along and touches on the issues that matter. One area where I've seen mastermind groups not work well is when it's not professionally facilitated or there's not a good structure. What happens is uh, a member's hot seat can be jeopardized or go off the rails because others in the room see something they wanna jump into and help out, right? We're entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers. So we see something and everyone wants to jump on it, but that may not be where the member needs help. And if you come in, with an area you want help on and you get something else that's not at all where you are looking for help, then there might be benefit, but it's not what you're looking for. So a facilitator, facilitator helps keep that on track. The other challenge that happens time-wise is if it's not kept on track, you get to the end of the day and a bunch of folks didn't get a chance to have a hot seat, which means the big burning issue they had for their business didn't get addressed. So that's why that time management really, really matters, as well as having that structure in terms of what's covered during each member session. Now, look, if you show up in a mastermind group totally unprepared and you're just thinking off the cuff, you'll get some value, but you'll get a lot more value if you do the prep work before you show up. Some of our members will go so far as to like create a slide deck covering the various things they want to go through because that provides the structure of the topics they want to cover, the questions they have, the resources and things they want to show and so on. Others will just do a screen share and walk through, you know, some different, um, you know, with a browser tab open, for example, up on the big screen. If they're going through, you know, their uh, their latest PPC campaign and their results or their funnel stats and things like that, we can get hands on with all that as well, just from a screen share. And others will just talk through stuff or use more like a whiteboard to uh, to organize their thoughts. But either way, the more prep work you do to make the most of your day, the better value you'll have coming out of there. And when I see people taking notes, the biggest aha moments, those biggest breakthroughs I see time and time again is not during an individual member session but it's during everyone else's session because that's where the ideas come up that really are those big light bulb moments where you see what's possible in different business models, in different business types and new marketing channels you never knew about. And then you get to have that interactive conversation, get access to the resources, best practices, mistakes, and so on. And you can jump right in and sort of pick up where that other member was in their business immediately in your own business. Yeah, that's, that's very powerful. And that's the preparation is key too, because you, you, get out of it what you put into it if you're going to show up and be like um maybe my biggest problem is marketing like you're going to waste all your time in discovery and never get to a solution so I've that's, seen it. that's a great great principle too yeah I've, I've seen it over and over um but i'm curious we've, we've hit on a number of things already but we're we're talking about 
how to leverage a mastermind to grow your business for business success. What are some of those outside of the preparation um, and having a good facilitator? Maybe you can even talk about that, but what are some of the ways that we can leverage a mastermind to grow our business that we haven't talked about yet? Yeah, so you want to be both open to providing feedback and peer advisory to others and also be vulnerable enough to receive it, right? So when I've seen folks who are who are trying out a group, we, we have a test drive process where people can see if our group is a fit for them. Sometimes I've seen people who get through a screening process and test drive only to find out they're not that open to the feedback being received from the room. So you definitely want, you'll get more value by being open to that feedback. On the flip side, everyone has superpowers. Everyone has some area of your business where you are doing really well, something that you get that comes easy and natural to you that is a challenge for others. So be willing to share in the group. Be willing to lovingly challenge others when you know your BS meter goes off or something doesn't make sense. Like call people on that. That helps all of us to grow by having that vulnerability and going into it. So in terms of how to get value during the day, you know, um, come in and tune in, right? Don't just be waiting for your session, but be listening to everyone else, be willing to ask questions, provide feedback, take down good notes. And um, be, if you're familiar with the, the term, like the reticular activating system, be looking out for those gold nuggets. At the start of each day, we sort of remind everyone about looking out for the gold nuggets there that if you only get like one big idea for the entire day, it's more than worth it. So even better is during each member session, we ask everyone to look for the gold nugget for them and their business during that other person's hot seat. And so at the end of the day, you've got a short list of big business changing gold nugget ideas. And if you only do something with one of those, what a difference that could make. What if you did something with more of those ideas, right? So be open to that. Um, what I love seeing in the room is what I call the cross pollination of ideas. Right? We've all got industries. You can go to your trade show for your group. If you're a financial planner, you can meet other financial planners. If you're a doctor, you can meet other doctors. If you're a SaaS business, you can meet other SaaS businesses. Right. But in our mastermind group, we have a diverse range of business owners and businesses. This design is intentional. What we see is that the cross-pollination of ideas between business models, business types, and so on is where we get big pivots. So we have, for example, um, you think about an e-commerce business sitting across the table from a retail store owner, right? The e-commerce business owner is crushing with email marketing. Every time they hit send, boom, money comes in the door. The retail store owner does direct mail. Every time they send out direct mail pieces, customers come in the door and buy. But those two businesses aren't using those other channels. So simply by sharing what they're working on, it opens the whole mind of the other business as to what's possible. And next thing you know, over the course of the month, the two business owners have shared and have implemented the other business model. Suddenly the e-commerce business owner has found out where to buy lists, what list brokers to work with, what mail houses to work with, what kind of direct mail works best, has sent out mail and got new customers for their online business through offline marketing. And that retail store owner has started to actually build up their list, has gotten permission-based opt-ins from customers coming into the store and so on, and is now for the first time sending out email. And every time people get the email, they're clicking and coming into store or buying online, and they've opened a whole new sales channel for their business. And that kind of cross-pollination happens when you have that mix of business models. And we see that every single meeting, and I love it. That's interesting because I don't see that all that often. Here's what I don't see. The most important part of a mastermind, my, this is my opinion, you could disagree with me, implementation and execution. I might be biased because we are fractional COOs. So that's what we do for our, our clients, right? We help them get stuff done and actually make progress, be a business owner. Yeah. Implementation and execution is always lacking. So I, I'm in a, I'm in a small group mastermind. It's, it's a, a number of friends who we met at an event a number of years ago. And inevitably every time we meet quarterly, so not as often, but every single time there's somebody who we check in we're like, all right, how'd you make progress on exactly what you said you were going to do? And it's always, uh, you know, I didn't get around to it. I found this other thing and we're just like, come on, dummy, right? You got to do the things if you want to get the results. So how do you actually make sure your members are following through on a consistent basis and doing the execution piece? You know, there was a, I was at an event years ago and the person running the event um, was talking about exactly that point about implementation. And what I loved is, you know, everyone's there. We're all taking notes, got good ideas of what we're going to do. And so, you know, he says from stage, he's like, look, if we sit you in the corner of that room right now, 
with all your notes and your ideas and your best intentions, and we come back and check on you a year from now, the only thing that's going to change is there'll be more cobwebs on you. What you've got to do is actually implement and execute on that. And so like, look, we're entrepreneurs, right? The good news is you're your own boss. The bad news is you're your own boss. So like, who are you accountable to? It's so easy to just take on the visionary role but not actually get anything done. And that's a big challenge for especially ooh shiny entrepreneurs, right? So we've got to make sure you actually do the implementation piece too. And a big part of that comes from accountability. So in our mastermind group, we have accountability. As each person is going through their hot seat, part of my role as the facilitator is we're taking down notes of the things we hear that will move the business forward. So we've got a checklist. And at the end of each person's hot seat, we take a moment to recap what the big items are that they want to get done between now and the next meeting. After the meeting, we share those out on our private members only email list and our private Slack group. And so that way there's that social accountability of what everyone has said they're going to get done. And we check in throughout the month to see how everyone's progressing on their accountability items. And then at each meeting, when we kick off anything you haven't covered between meetings, you take a moment to share with the group where you're at on those items, where you got stuck and what you decided is no longer an issue right? Sometimes look, business is fluid. You realize what you thought was a really big deal. Actually, you don't want to do, and that's okay. But that's very different than showing up and just saying, oops, I didn't get around to it or nothing has changed. So keep the social, social accountability in place, have others hold you accountable, right? And have a structure for the accountability so you can really move the needle and move business forward. Because it's all about that implementation, not just the ideation. Yeah. Shameless plug. If you need handholding for implementation, call us. We That's what we do as fractional COOs. But that's, oh, that always drives me nuts. Do you ever keep you know, You'll love this. As, oh, an yeah, implement, as an implementer, um, I was at a mastermind group a number of years back. And this was, you know, again, one of those uh, rather high level destination groups. We got together two, three times a year. You know, these were mostly seven, eight figure business owners. Uh, and one of the guys there was sort of just, you know, an, an icon in the industry. He'd been around for quite a while. This is the guy who, you know, he'd fly out in one of his private jets. He'd be there for the day, uh, the two days actually of masterminding and was really open to the ideas of what everyone's sharing in the room, right? But here's the thing that I love is he'd be taking down voracious notes and he was an old school guy. And this was also a few, few years ago. As we took a break between each member session, he would walk out, hand his notes off to an assistant who would then go and fax them back to the office. He would come back into the mastermind boardroom with a blank sheet of paper and an open mind and take down new notes. Now, by the end of the day, his home office full of implementers were already moving forward on things, tasking things out, scoping things out, figuring out the follow-up questions. They were moving on those ideas and executing. As the business owner and as the visionary, you don't have to be the main implementer for the business. You can outsource that. You can hire for it. You can have someone like you guys helping out with it. But someone has to actually implement the ideas and move it forward. So that's awesome that, you know, how you guys are helping your clients out with that. That's why he has a private jet. That's all right. I'll say about that. <laughs> right? That's brilliant. So if you, if you want to learn more about Bay Area Mastermind, uh, let me ask you this. Do you accept members from all across the country slash globe? Um, put your website on the screen. It's also in the show notes. But uh, if someone does want to join this group, what, what does it look like? Yeah, so we have um, an application process for our test drive. So look, it doesn't make sense to hand over the kind of money mastermind groups cost when you don't know anything about the group, the members, how it's run and so on. So we have our test drive process. This lets you uh, complete an application. You hop on a call to go through, through the application to see if there's a fit, answer any questions you have. And if there is, you invest in just the one day. And after that one day, we look for a two-way fit. So you think the group will be valuable to you and your business. And the group feels that you'll be valuable to the group. And if there's that true two-way fit, then we extend the offer for membership in the group so you can be with us longer term. Whether you're local, coming in virtually, you know, commuting in, any of those different ways are options to join us. And we have members who use uh, who use all those ways to be part of the group. So that's all like you mentioned at bayareamastermind.com. That's awesome. Uh, if, I, I love the, the idea of in-person and um, getting to know people and building those relationships, especially in a mastermind format. But if you can do it virtually, that's awesome. These yep. principles are agnostic of what mastermind you're in. These are how to leverage a mastermind group for success. So I know we have a number of listeners and subscribers from New Zealand. We love you, Kiwis. You guys can do this too. You can do it over there. 
in New Zealand and start your own local group and see what, what comes of it. So um, this has been incredibly valuable there. Thank you, Jeremy, for, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This is a ton of fun. Love what you're doing, the community you've created. And uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. So as a custom though, I do have one last question and it's a question for a question. So you can see behind me, if you're watching, there's a giant question mark that's upside down on my wall. We believe asking powerful questions gets you powerful answers and results in your business. That's how you get to the next level of success. So Jeremy, around this topic, of leveraging a mastermind for, for business success and growth, what is one powerful question the listener can be asking themselves, whether it's creating a group, going into a meeting, whatever you want it to be about, what's one powerful question we can get so that the listener can get the most out of a mastermind meeting? So there's a litmus test I love to use to help business owners figure out, are they self-employed? Like you were talking about at the beginning of the show, working 90 hours a week, you know, the business being dependent upon them and so on, or are they a true business owner? And here's that question you can ask yourself. If you were to step away from your business for a week, a month, three months, when you came back, what kind of situation would you be looking at? A dumpster fire where you're out of business and everything's gone or a business the same or better than when you left it? And if the answer is not that latter, then you are still in some way self-employed or in that process between the two. And that's okay because this is a journey, right? But ask yourself that question and periodically circle back and check in with yourself on how much closer you are to being, being able to step away from your business for an extended period of time. Not that you have to, but knowing that you can means you've found that entrepreneurial freedom and you have a business that's truly supporting you, not you that is the only thing holding up your business. Jeremy is either a longtime listener of this show or he's sat in on my client meetings because that is the one question we ask our clients on a repeated basis every single quarter. How close are we? How close are we? We want you to get out of your business for the longest amount of time possible. That is it, probably, I might be biased, but one of the top three most valuable questions you can ask if you own a business. So Jeremy, thank you for that. Rock You're star. welcome. And do you want a quick answer? To, maybe not a quick answer to that question. Please. So for, for our listeners who are tuning in, who are, you know, wondering like, is that possible? Do I want that? Can you really do that? Um, when my daughter was born, this is, you know, uh, just over nine years ago now, um, we shared the news with my team that we were expecting. And, uh, after all the congratulations, the next thing they said was, well, Jeremy, we've got six months. How long are you taking off? And we're going to provide a list of the systems and the people we need to make that smooth. And they kicked me out for three months. And so that was three months where I didn't log in or check my email, wasn't looking at messages, no communication with the team. And they ran things and grew things for three months while I was gone. I came back recharged, refreshed, having been fully present for the birth of my daughter and the expansion of our family. And what a tremendous time that was, time you can never, ever get back. That was only possible by having the right systems and the right teams in place. We did that again two and a half years later when my son was born. Um, we've done that again quite often. We uh, we head out offline um, for months at a time for traveling the world or you know pursuing others other adventures and passions, and it is entirely possible to do. I've done it multiple times. Our clients are able to do it. Your clients are able to do it, and our listeners, you can do this too. It is possible. Get out there and move forward on that journey. You can get out of it. Preach. Yes. If you can't do that now you need to in the near future, it will free you. It'll take you to the next level of business and be truly a business owner. So yes, it's possible. Ask better questions, get those better answers though. Thank you for listening to Harmonious at Lunch. Wherever you are watching, listening, please subscribe. We love having you here. Join the Kiwis, right? Come on board in New Zealand. We love you guys. We love you as listeners. And we put on this daily stupid madness show because you keep listening to it and we love making the episodes. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Keep growing your business.